Hi, welcome to Calvin's Lab. So, I realized in my last video that I mentioned a few times this idea of a, a standard operating procedure, or SOP, but I never actually defined the term. So that is what this video is going to do, is going to define standard operating procedure. Um, what is it? Where to find it? And why you should have one in the first place if you don't already. So uh, a standard operating procedure, um, the way I think of it, it's usually a binder. It's a physical binder that is found in the lab, um, some place where everyone who works in the lab has access to it. And some universities require these. Um, other places, it's um, other places, certain professors, certain people in charge of labs think it's just a good idea and so they use it. Um, but basically a standard operating procedure is sort of like a course syllabus for a lab. So it gives you whoever, it gives the person working in the lab uh, all the information they need right there in one place. And that's kind of the idea behind it. All the information that you might need to know if you're working in this lab is in the standard operating procedure. So the first and, and most important information is the, the contact information. Um, typically there's a list of phone numbers, email addresses for the person in charge of the lab, the uh, lab manager, if, if there's a lab manager or an assistant lab manager, uh, things like that but also contact information for places like the maintenance department. If the university has a veterinarian on staff, the, the number for the veterinary staff, the number for the animal facility, um, whatever other numbers, whatever, whatever other contact information you might need is right there in one place so that you can find it if you need it. Also, many universities require various training to work in the lab, and what training is required really depends on what kind of work the lab is doing. For instance, training in human subjects research, training in animal work, um, the various types of training. So having all that training written down, uh, what training you need to work in this lab, when it needs to be renewed, and where you can find it, is very helpful to make sure that your trainees hit the ground running, they can get done with the training as soon as possible and actually start working in the lab. Uh, however, one word of caution, if you are going to put down all the required training, make sure you keep it up to date because there's nothing worse than getting all these course numbers, but the course system has changed and so the, the course numbers have changed and so then you can't find the courses you're looking for or you find one that's the same number, but it's actually a different course, and it, it's, it just could turn into a mess, so make sure you keep that updated. Um, also information about the safety of the lab. What kind of personal protective equipment is required? Do you, for instance, do you need to wear a lab coat all the time? Do you need to wear a lab coat in certain situations or in certain areas of the lab? Talking about when and where certain personal protective equipment is required. Um, also talking about the safety equipment in the lab. What kind of safety equipment, what kind of uh, safety preparations do you have? Where is the fire extinguisher located? Where is the eyewash station? What is the evacuation route? Things like that. Also, uh, standard operating procedure is a good place to keep track of all the other equipment in the lab. So this could be an equipment inventory, it could also include checklists for who, who is the contact person for each piece of equipment. Also, how often should it be cleaned or maintained? Uh, how often does it need to be calibrated? All the information. Also, in standard operating procedure, of course, you would want to put in various procedures. If there is a procedure that your lab does all the time, it's a good idea to write it down and put it in the standard operating procedure. This could be something simple, like uh, lab opening and closing procedures. If you're the first one into the lab, or the last one out, you have to go through a checklist of different things that you need to do. Make sure that all the lights are off, make sure that 
Uh, if there's equipment that needs to be unplugged at night, make sure that's unplugged. If there's equipment that needs to be left on or any timers that need to be set, make sure those are done. Um, but also, if there's a particular, um, a particular assay, like a specific ELISA kit that you use all the time, including the procedure for those ELISA kits that everyone in the lab does a ton of, is a good idea. That way, if anyone needs the procedure, they can find it in the standard operating procedure. Now, of course, it gets kind of complicated with different projects, have, have different kits, and so that's when a binder system, where there's binders for specific projects, is more suited. And But those common ones that you do all the time, you can include those. Also, um, including some basic information about the various studies that are going on in the lab is a good idea. Um, these, can, these don't have to be very long, they can simply be abstracts of what the various studies are going on in the lab. It, it's a good idea, especially if you have a bunch of different people working on a bunch of different projects, um, to have one centralized place where you can learn about or remind yourself of all the different things going on in the lab. For instance, if I'm helping someone else with their project that I don't normally help with, so I don't know much about it, I can go in and I can read the, about their study, about what they're doing. That way, when I actually go to help them, I, I've got a better idea of what's going on. So that, those are my thoughts of what's generally included in a standard operating procedure. Like I said, it's usually a binder placed right in the lab where anyone who is working in the lab has access to it. It could also be an electronic file. Um, and some universities require these. Um, other places, the principal investigator might just think that it's a good idea. I, I generally think that this is a good idea to make sure that everything stays organized in lab. So. I'm curious to hear down in the comments what your thoughts on standard operating procedures are, whether you think this is a common thing, a helpful thing, and if there's anything else that you would include that I have forgotten about, I'd love to hear that down in the comments below.